right, everybody, welcome to a new tool time. Sorry I've been away for a little while. Uh, I definitely still interested in doing tool time videos uh, and will be doing it more often. Just uh, had a little battle with uh, the coronavirus, and um, but I'm back now and feeling much better. So this week I thought we would touch on um, a tool that just came out hot off the press by XNL Hacker. And this week we're gonna talk about uh, a tool called Waymore. Now, if you've been doing application assessment, um, basically app sec testing, any type of web testing, right? One of the things you have to do in your methodology is discover all of the endpoints for the application. And uh, when you're on the site using an interception proxy like burp or zap and you spider it, that is getting a version of what you can see and what your account has access to. But there may be other links that you can't find, other endpoints and parameters you can't find. Now, how do you find this? Well, there's usually two methods, or th you know, three methods actually. Uh, the first method is to do brute forcing. You can brute force for endpoints and, um, and find them that way using common lists of uh, default files or uh, you know, common names of para params or endpoints or things like that. Uh, and we've talked a little bit about brute forcing in the past. Another way is to parse all of these websites that keep historical data about targets um, on their sites. And so uh, one of the ways that you can do this is parsing archive.org or what's uh, used to be called the Wayback Machine, right? And so this is what Waymore does, is it parses um, it parses all of these sites like the Wayback Machine, which is archive.org, the Common Crawl Index, Alien Vault's OTX projects, and URLScan.io. And it takes these four sources, and what it'll do is it'll query their APIs and add some other methods now to pull back endpoints um, that you might have not got, you might not have gotten when you were spidering the sites or brute forcing the site. And then the third method would be uh, parsing JavaScript, which we will also talk about uh, in a future video and what uh, cool new tools are coming out there. Um, so Waymore is a tool written by XNL Hacker, who has been uh, writing a couple of tools for the bug bounty and kind of uh, AppSec world. Um, and uh, you know this one is definitely for everyone, right? It's not a recon tool. It'll help you in finding more endpoints when you're doing application assessment. So this one's really applicable across you know all types of hackers, whether you're a pen tester, red teamer, bug bounty hunter, whatever, right? And so the thing that's different about Waymore, rather than two tools that have existed for a long time that are very popular, um, is that what it'll do is it will get um, from these archive sites it will uh, basically download the responses and pull links from them as well. Um, so the archive responses that you know basically these sites carry. So they, so if you go to archive.org and you look at a target, you can see basically a historical view of their website. And that's what archive.org does, archive does. So does Common Crawl and Alien Vault and URL Scan. They'll take a snapshot of a website so that um, people can see what the website used to look like before for whatever reason, right? Uh, journalists use these sites to see the difference between websites when they change like their privacy policies and stuff like this. Security testers use it to find, you know, maybe URLs that used to exist, but uh, don't anymore or no longer linked on the page, but maybe still are actually on the web server. Um, really, there's a whole bunch of needs for historical snapshots of websites, um, and these four sources provide those. And so what uh, Waymore is doing is, is basically downloading all these archived responses and also parsing them for, for more links. And so the other two tools that you'll hear about in this area, in this exact kind of method, are Wayback URLs by Tom Nom Nom and Gao by Corbin, uh, Corbin Leo, which is uh, at hacker underscore on Twitter. And both of these are amazing tools, um, but don't do this extra step of downloading the archive response and parsing it. And so uh, Waymore is a new tool that'll give us even more endpoints and coverage from these four sources. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into it and, uh, and let's see what happens. This is a raw take. I haven't used it really much before. Um, I'm gonna install it. I'm gonna show you, you know, the run syntax as it exists. And we're gonna choose a target today. Um, Today, I think I'll go with a, a cool one that is um, very in sync with uh, what I spent my time doing when I was sick. So so here we have my testing box and um, you can see that I'm just gonna git clone um, the project and uh, it's all good there. So we'll CD into uh, the directory and I believe that the documentation tells us that we just need to run the setup file, yeah. 
So grab here. All right, we get some warnings, but I think those are okay. And now I think that uh, Waymore is installed. Uh, so let's just see. Dot pi. Cool, so it's running. It gives us some errors that we haven't input any syntax. So let's go check out the usage syntax on the page uh, for the tool. Um, so I is for input. Um, this tool works best, and I was following XNL Hacker's um, Twitter, um, which can be found at, uh, at XNL-Hacker with uh, 4 for the A and uh, 3 for the R. Um, and uh, it's best to run it on a domain with no sub, no subdomain, so uh, no prefix. So uh, we would do a dash I, and then you can specify a mode. So by default, uh, actually, I think by default it does both. Um, let's see. So, uh, yeah, it does both. It will treat the URLs from the API of the sites, and it will also um, it will also retrieve the down uh, a retrieve from the downloaded responses as well. Um, so, so we will do dash B, I guess, because I want to grab both. I want this extra functionality. That's why this tool is great because it it has the dash B. Um, you can specify no subdomains. You can add filters that you don't want um, certain responses. Uh, you can limit how many responses we saved. You can add uh, year filters to when you want to pull the archival data. So a lot of um, a lot of things that you can do with this tool, and you can time it out. Uh, you can multi-thread it with processes. Um, so it's great. It's got a lot of extensibility. But let's just go down to, uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, so here's some uses examples at the bottom, right? And so here he's running it against uh, Red Bull in just the URL mode. Um, so today our target um, will be a Hacker One program, and um, that is the Walt Disney Company. Remember, recon is not a crime, and uh, we're not pulling anything from their website directly, so we're cool with doing all of this on camera. Um, and uh, so they have a, a VDP, right? So they don't pay for bugs. Um, sad face. Uh, but they're pretty wide scope, right? So uh, good to run tools like this and check out. I want to check out Lucasfilm because I spent um, I spent a portion of my sick time <laughs> basically uh, watching the new uh, the new Star Wars show, which is. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, which was pretty cool. So uh, lucasfilm.com is the domain that I will run the tool against. All right, go back to our shell here. And so that was, uh, I mean, we're just going to do Python and uh, waymore.py dash i. And uh, I was going to use lucasfilm, ltd, or lucasfilm.com. And then we'll do dash, I think, M for, or dash mode, and we're going to do both. All right, let's see what that gives us. So here we can see, um, I think this is going to take a little while to query both the API and the responses. So I'll cut here, and then I'll come back to you when uh, the output is done. OK, we're back after a run of the tool. And um, while I was waiting for the tool, it did take a while to run, right? So it's downloading all this archived content. content. Uh, I had to run through basically the usage because I was kind of doing this blind. Uh, and I realized that I would have to have a suite of tools to um, to get the output I wanted from, from Waymore. And so I'll explain that right now. So uh, basically, Waymore's job is to pull down the archives uh, for... Um, for the four sources that it handles, Alien Vault, URL Scan, Lucas, um, and Common Crawl, and Archive.org. And so we've done this to lucasfilm.com. And then eventually when we go into our results folder for lucasfilm.com, uh, now what we have are the archived responses. And now it doesn't give us just like a, a list of links like some of the other tools you're used to using. What you have to do now is parse these files um, with another tool uh, that XNL Hacker has built called Link Finder. And so I've talked about Link Finder um, in, uh, in other talks. And so 
uh, in my NahamCon talk, I talked about Link Finder, which is also on his GitHub. And Link Finder, uh, XNL Link Finder, is basically a play or an evolution of the original Link Finder tool that we've been using by Gerben Gervato for the longest time, right? Gerben made this tool, and primarily this tool that Gerben made, Link Finder, was supposed to target JavaScript files and pull out relative and non relative links from JavaScript and build. Uh, and basically give them to us so we can uh, find these endpoints uh, that are hidden in JavaScript. Um, and one of the big shortcomings of these uh, of the tools and the regex that uh, Gerben made was that um, it was targeted at JavaScript files, the tool was targeted at JavaScript files, and you weren't getting inline JavaScript out of web pages or XML content or um, HTML content where links were hyperlinked. And at the end of the day, what we're trying to do with this tool is find also find um, endpoints that are linked inside of uh, different places. And so now that we've used um, the other tool, we're going to run XN Link Finder on it. Um, and so I've done that ahead of time, but I'm going to go ahead and show you. Uh, to install Link Finder, it's, it's pretty much the same process, right? Git clone it, um, CD into it, and set it up using Python. And then there's a couple arguments. There's an input. Um, the input is where we're going to list the directory where all of our XNL files are from our other tool. And um, and then we want to give it an output file. Um, and you can give it some scope prefixes and um, some filters, but we're going to do a very generic run across all of the subdomains. So if we go back to the command line. I'm going to scroll through pretty much everything I fumbled through off camera. Um, but um, you know I listed out all the XNS, XNL files, which there were a ton, right? And then eventually, uh, I tried to use uh, XNL Link Finder. It wasn't updated, so it wasn't working. And it gave me a whole bunch of errors, so just ignore all this. Um, and then eventually, I, I reinstalled it uh, and updated it. And here's where I ran it across um, our run on lucasfilm.com, right? So I ran Python 3 XNL Link Finder against the directory uh, where the results were for way more, the other tool. and um, I gave a scope prefix to add to all of the domains uh, lucasfilm.com, the ones that were non-relative, and then I said look for everything, all subs, and give me an output file of um, lucasfilm.txt. And so now the output file here, um, I catted it out, and you can see these are all the endpoints that we found. And so not only are we getting endpoint data, we're getting endpoint data and, you know, we're finding some subdomains in this methodology, right? I don't know if these are anything that anything else wouldn't have found. You'll probably get these in your spiders um, when you use Burp Suite and you're spidering the site. You know, if you keep up your, um, if you keep up your scope, don't, your scope filter in Burp to uh, lucasfilm.com, you'll get all of these subdomains and you'll see them. Uh, but you can see that we get a lot of links for the main site. Um, and there's there's a lot, so there's like 4,000 or something like that, right? So, um, so if I go down here, and I just go to my line again, really what I did is, in order to parse some of this data, um, I just catted the lucasfilm.txt, which is the output file that we use, and then I grepped. I didn't want anything. I just wanted to see what interesting kind of subdomains they had, um, and I grepped dash v lucasfilm.com, and so this shows me everything that's not www.lucasfilm. And so, like, uh, you can see there's press dot, press images dot Lucasfilm, uh, get D, jobs, and you can get the links here. And what I'm interested in when I'm looking at all this is, does anything look, like, kind of juicy? I'm not going to really look at anything on the main domain, I don't think. Um, but I'll just take you through kind of my headspace when, you know, I have an output of a tool like this. So, like, it's like, what the heck is this? Like, ebm.e.lucasfilm.com, right? And so I'll grab this link and um, let's go ahead and put it in the browser. It failed to open CDV. Um, so generic-ish error message, but there's also a param listed here. And this would be the kind of thing where I would fuzz the hell out of this parameter here, which is called T underscore S, S params um, for different types of injections because CDB is referencing probably some sort of uh, data set. Uh, or database. So that is both tools uh, using XNL Link Finder and um, and uh, way more. And yeah, so again, this 
at the current moment is probably the most superior um, kind of um, historical um, puller of uh, endpoints and parameter data, right? So uh, if you look at like, you know, a general methodology, and I just made this really quickly, you know, my methodology is like tech profile the site, find CVs, misconfigs, port scan, and then content discovery. And this portion of hacking fits in the content discovery, right? We're finding it, we're trying to find as many endpoints and parameters as possible in order to succeed in testing, you know, inputs for the site. And then, you know, you move on to actual fuzzing and analysis here. But this is where we are and this is where this tool sits. And I would say that for the historical tools like Gao and Tom Nom Nom's um, Wayback URLs, uh, this is probably the most superior. I got, I probably get the most results out of this tool than anything else really. Um, so yeah, so that's about it. Um, it is, it'll be my preferred thing that I pipe into my workflow. It'll have to do some chaining together of way more in XNL link finder, um, but it's really great. Uh, there's a lot of extensibility to this tool um, as well as link finder. I will do a, a different video on XNL link finder in the future. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. Just wanted to do a cool, uh, you know, kind of a cool uh, tool time on this new tool that came out and uh, kind of get back in the game because I was sick for the longest time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you on the next one. All right. Bye.